I'm going to go over how to set up the transmitter. First of all, this is the transmitter. And here are the three line cables that connect the transmitter to the cable. First, note that each line is marked L1, L2, and L3. Each cable is also marked with L1, L2, and L3. We want to plug in the appropriate line cable into the appropriate input on the transmitter. So here's line one. To connect the cable, first I'm going to match these notches with the notches on the transmitter. I'm going to push down and twist until I hear a click. When I hear the click, I know the connection is firm. I'm going to do the same thing with line two and line three. Here's line two, and I'm going to put it under line two on the transmitter. Again, I'm going to line the notches, push down, and then twist until I hear a click. Line three. I'm going to line the notches, push down, and twist. To remove one of the line cables, I'm going to push this middle tab up, twist, and then pull out. Okay. To turn the transmitter on, just push this button right here. As you can see, it's blinking under line one. That means it's in single phase mode. To go to three phase mode, push this button right here. As you can see, now it's blinking under all three phases. This is how you know it is in three phase mode. All right. Now we need to connect to the other end of the cable or to the end of the cable. But first we want to turn the transmitter off. Now that the line cables have been connected to the transmitter, we're going to connect to the cable. Line one, you're going to connect the red to the conductor and the black to the shield and the shield should be grounded. So line one, red to the conductor, black to the shield. For line two, it's the same thing, where the red alligator clip is gonna connect to the conductor of the cable and the black alligator clip to the shield of the cable. And again, the shield is grounded. Last, line three cable, the red connects to the conductor and the black connects to the shield of the cable and the shield should be grounded. On the opposite end of the cable, both the conductor and shield are grounded. Now that the transmitter is set up, we can go ahead and turn it on. Again, we turn it on by pressing the power button. Also, we can see that it's in three phase mode because a light will light up under each phase. Now, we're going to take the receiver to calibrate or verify our data for the cable, for each cable. What we're going to do, we're going to wrap this around the cable and make sure the arrows face away from the transmitter or towards the far end. So first, I'm going to start with line one. The arrow is facing away from the transmitter or towards the far end. And also, it's good to check and make sure the connections from the appropriate line or for the appropriate phase. So I'm going to trace back the cable. 
and this does go to line one. And it's good to, to do this for all the lines. Line two goes to line two, and line three does go to line three. To turn on the receiver, you press this button right here. And what we're going to do is ID a cable. So we're going to press ID. What it's asking us is if we want to start or continue an existing ID session, we're going to start a new session. This is the first time we've met these cables. So new. And it's telling me that the existing ID data will be replaced. OK. Now set the transmitter to single phase or three phase mode. We already have it set to three phase mode, so this step we can press OK on. Now it's searching for a signal and it's processing some information you can see with the hourglass there. As you can see, this is asking me if it's on line one. And of course, I want to look back and see if this is on line one. Let me trace back to one. It is. So I'm going to press OK. This is the verification data. So I'm going to press OK. And as you can see, it's filling in that block right here saying that it's saving that data that I just confirmed into the receiver. Now I'm going to go on to line two. Once it processed information, now it's asking me if I want to confirm this as line two. And since I've traced back the cable and notified verified already that it is, I'm going to press OK. So the verification data will be saved to the receiver. So OK. All right. And now I'm going to wrap the coil around line three to verify or calibrate line three for the receiver. Again, the arrow is facing away from the transmitter or towards the far end. So it's processing your hearing. Now it's asking me if I want to confirm this data for L3. And I'm going to say yes. Notice how L3 block has filled in. Now I'm ready for ID mode. All the data for L1, L2, and L3 have been stored to the receiver, and so I can move to the next step of identification. After I've verified all the data, I'm going to go to the opposite end of the cable, or wherever I want to ID a cable. And again, I'm going to wrap the coil around each cable in question to find which cable it is. So I wrap the coil around the cable. It's processing information. Now it's telling me that it's a 98, 92% match of L1. I get a little smiley face here. So it appears that I have identified L1. Now I would either mark this or whatever procedure you would do to label that cable. For L2, my guess is this cable. And I'm going to take the receiver and I'm going to look at the data that it's I've already verified it against, and it seems like this is a really good match for L2. And so I can mark this cable. Next, I'm searching for L3. So 
So I wrap the coil around the cable again. I take my receiver and it appears to be a good match for L3 as well. So I could label this. Also, just as a good rule, before you mark anything, it is a good idea to scan all the cables first before um, you mark them. Just to make sure there's nothing weird that happens. Also, if you happen to be facing the wrong direction, you'll get something that might look like this. When you see this, your coil is in the wrong direction, so you have to make it face in the office's direction. Now the coil is facing the correct direction. The receiver sees a change. And is able to process from there. If I wrap it around the incorrect cable, I will see something like this or a question mark. Also, the cables on the opposite end, the conductor and the shield are both grounded on the far end.